Bernie Sanders recently held a rally with Ilhan Omar in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and she made a really powerful case for Bernie Sanders, but during the course of her stump speech, Fox News took issue with one portion. Now, they're going to fearmonger about what she says, and they're going to trot out an all-too-familiar argument that they've made hundreds of times against the left, particularly Bernie Sanders and AOC. I'm sure you can predict what that is before you even hear them speak. Nonetheless, here it is. I am beyond honored and excited for a president who will fight against Western imperialism and fight for a just world. Greg, what kind of world is she thinking about? Oh, when I hear her, I just say, oh, brother. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, you know, they were talking about, uh, I, Bernie Sanders was talking about imperialism, right? Yeah. He's yeah. talking about imperialism. So you realize it, his socialist heart isn't really in Sweden or Denmark. Mm -hmm. It's in the old Soviet bloc and Cuba. Uh, we love him as an adorable, cr uh, cranky Muppet, but his ideas are kind of destructive. And when you accuse anybody of like, oh, you don't love America, um, when they are talking about America as some kind of Western imperialistic mess, there's a valid point to be made there. And that, you, and that they can't wait to see America fundamentally changed. Well, I would say that the real Western imperialists were the French and the British, who really screwed up the entire map. If you look at the <laughs> Middle East, they're the ones that drew all those lines that we're now defending. Come on, British. <laughs> Way to take it to the Brits. <laughs> Seriously. Oh we're gonna, we're we were an imperialist nation. The, in the, in the America commercial wasn't. break, I can't wait to hear any thoughts on this. Uh, I mean, people are right now in Venezuela buying gas with cigarettes. It's ridiculous. And this is why people laugh at him as eventually yeah. being the mainstream candidate. When you throw around that Western imperial, like, it's never going to happen. And her saying it's never been further away than my in my lifetime or whatever, refugee to Congress. She's but they did have a big crowd, It just happened. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, it's funny to me. Isn't Trump the one who says America first and trying to get us out of everything and but so that's not well that's America. no that we're talking about imperialism dana and so it seems to me like trump is saying hey you know what i don't like this nation building stuff i don't like the idea we get involved as the world's policeman huh this sounds like the left-wing version of trump talking point oh interesting so you're saying that they're actually for trump 2020 well i'm saying <laughs> you're you guys are sitting here oh, oh this is so outrageous in fact it sounds like your guy yeah. <laughs> fair point All right. so it is evident to me that fox news is getting incredibly lazy before, they used to take a little bit more time to, like, finesse their anti-Bernie arguments, but now they just go straight to the uh, Cuba-Venezuela arguments. I mean, do they honestly believe that this is effective? Like, they stopped making the Venezuela argument for a while because I think they realized that they were using it so much it was becoming a meme and the left was really making fun of them. But, you know, they're back to their same old tricks. So let's get to what they say. So when it comes to Ilhan Omar, Greg Gutfeld says, when I hear her, I say, oh, brother. Now, they all burst out into laughter. And what he was referring to, what essentially he did there, was a dog whistle to conspiracy theorists who believe that Ilhan Omar married her brother to get to the United States. Now, there is zero evidence for this theory. Nonetheless, it's something that has persisted on the right. I believe that this is something that was started by Laura Loomer. I'm not 100% sure about that, so don't quote me, but... There's no basis in reality for it, right? And they don't want to address the substance of what she's saying, so they resort to a smear that is completely and utterly baseless. Now, Greg Gutfeld goes on to say, Bernie's socialist heart isn't really in Sweden or Denmark. It's in the old Soviet bloc and Cuba. <laughs> okay. He literally provided zero evidence, and not even an argument, really, to back up that claim. What is it about what Ilhan Omar said there links Bernie Sanders to Cuba? Like, you didn't use anything to make that jump. If you really want to argue against your opponent, you need to argue based on substance, based on the merit of their claims and try not to straw man. But Fox News, all they do is straw man. And then, of course, Greg Gutfeld went on to say that it's a valid point to accuse someone of not loving America if we critique Western imperialism. So if we don't, in other words, condone 100% of what our government does, the actions that they take abroad in the Middle East and North Africa, then we're not patriotic. Would you say the same thing about people in North Korea? The way that they idolize Kim Jong-un as if he is 
a demigod? Don't you think that that's weird? So why can't you be introspective and realize that maybe us never questioning our own government's actions is a little culty, kind of like it's culty in North Korea? Why is it culty in North Korea, but not culty in the United States? Like, I don't get it. Like, Americans, by and large, on Fox News, they don't have any self-awareness whatsoever. And most Americans, they'll just recite the Pledge of Allegiance, not even think about it, not even think, this seems weird, this seems like indoctrination. And Fox News helps to perpetuate that. Like, on the left, we really are about challenging authority, actually questioning our structures, our political organizations. But what Greg Gutfeld inadvertently is saying is, look, you should just be a sheep, otherwise we're going to say that you don't love America. Okay, that's not a very persuasive argument, but, um, Proceed to make it so you look like a fucking fool. Now, they then move on to what we all knew was coming. The part where they stop trying to even make any sort of an argument whatsoever, and they just scream the following. Venezuela. So, of course, they trotted out the good old Venezuela argument. But ask yourself, how did they go from talking about U.S. imperialism to Venezuela? Like, they completely changed the subject and try to shoehorn Venezuela into the discussion uh, in a way that just didn't really make sense. Well, it's because these people are political hacks and they are intellectual lightweights because they don't know how to do anything but cite the same talking points and common themes on Fox News that they always cite. Like, they're so predictable at this point that I can predict what they're going to say before they open their fucking mouths. Like, they're going to play all the Fox News greatest hits. They're going to talk about socialism and communism and Venezuela and Cuba. And if the conversation is about climate change, then they're going to call a Democrat hypocrites for, you know, flying in airplanes. They are predictable. And all they do is straw man us. But as they continue to straw man us and take us out of context and just smear individuals like AOC and Ilhan Omar and Bernie Sanders without actually providing a persuasive argument to counter what we're saying, they are making themselves look like fools. But thankfully, Juan Williams, as usual, was the sole voice of reason on this panel. And what I love was that he came up with the counter argument that was so profound that he actually got Greg Gutfeld to concede, who's a hack, by the way, that that criticism was actually pretty fair. So the argument was, look, if you are going to accept and embrace really what Donald Trump is saying about America first and ending regime change wars, why is it that when a Democrat or someone on the left makes a similar argument but is actually sticking to it, who believes what they're saying, why are they kooky? When we talk about ending U.S. imperialism and meddling in foreign elections, why is it kooky? Only when we say it, but when Donald Trump says it, it's perfectly sound, it's perfectly reasonable. Well, there's an easy answer for that. It's because you guys are fucking hacks over at Fox News. And because that was such a good point, uh, Greg Gudfeld, he couldn't, he couldn't respond. Like, you can't respond to that because it's true. Now, getting to U.S. imperialism and why this is something that is so incredibly important and why every single American should be against U.S. imperialism is because if you're not, then that says a lot about your character. The United States has used its international hegemony to overthrow democratically elected governments all throughout the world, notably in Iran and Chile. And we've done this so we can install puppet dictators who will grant us unfettered access to their natural resources. We've toppled regimes in countries that didn't attack us. We've turned countries into failed states. We illegally conduct drone strikes in multiple countries that end up killing more civilians than not. We have hundreds of military bases throughout the world, and on top of that, we use our influence to prop up human rights abusers like Saudi Arabia. We act as an obstacle to ending apartheid in Israel. We turn a blind eye as India escalates tensions with Pakistan, both countries, by the way, are nuclear powers. So when we're talking about U.S. imperialism and the need to end it, we're referring to all of that. Moral atrocities that are being committed by our government, paid for with our tax dollars. And this entire U.S. imperialism that's being waged right now is being driven by a bloodthirsty military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. But as uh, Richard Wolff put it, even he couldn't have predicted just how powerful it would become one day. 
So what we have done in this country is we prioritize the profits of weapons manufacturers over the lives of human beings in other countries. So when we talk about U.S. imperialism, we're not just talking about ending regime change wars. We're not just talking about bringing the American troops home. We're talking about stopping everything that we are doing to destabilize the planet. That's what we're talking about. It's a moral necessity because if you care about human life, if you genuinely believe that human rights are a thing and that they should be respected, then think for yourself, Greg, and Fox News and viewers of Fox News. But of course, that's too much to ask because these are individuals who are not actually interested in political dialogue. These are people who are paid to lie. These are paid propagandists. And they're doing exactly what they are paid to do. But that's just shameless, because rather than fear-mongering about ending U.S. imperialism, if they were actually a real news outlet who challenged power and didn't just act as one of many stenographers to power, then they would actually be educating people about why we need to end U.S. imperialism. Because objectively speaking, it's morally bad. It is not cost-efficient. Uh, the military-industrial complex and weapons manufacturers don't actually create very many jobs and it's something that we need to acknowledge. Like, if Russia was doing this, if China was waging a war in our backyard, we would be very concerned, and rightfully so. So we need to have a little bit of self-awareness and realize that if we wouldn't want another country to do what we're doing, maybe we should stop doing what citizens in other countries view as a net negative that destabilizes the entire world. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. I'm not sure, you know, um, that I expected anything different from this. I already knew that once Ilhan Omar stumped for Bernie Sanders, Fox News was going to say something about something that she said. And, of course, I was correct. I just expected, I guess, at least a little bit more substantive argument, but it's Fox News. So, you know, they're, they're getting dumber with time, it seems. But keep it up, because you're only helping us make the case against you. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing.